Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? It is Deltre. We're back with some more Fire Emblem 12 Lunatic Reverse. Last time we got the best unit in the goddamn game. I do not care. <laughs> Obviously, it's jokes. It's jokes, guys. I don't know what I was thinking. For some reason, I thought that maybe you guys would have a little bit of mercy on me this time. Like, maybe there'd be one or two people out in the comments that would say, like, Oh, Deltra, you know, I really appreciate the gesture of trying to use S, but you're already using dice and berries, man. Maybe you don't have to go so hard on yourself. No! No! No, that's not what happened at all! Oh, God, no! No, 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 no! They've got people out there hitting the like button six, seven, eight, nine, ten times just because I'm using this girl. What the hell, man? No! So I guess if we're using S, she's gonna be the new God Slayer in sound. Last time, of course, we completed chapter 15. I honestly didn't talk about the map too much. I don't think it's that bad. I did see a comment or two saying that they felt like that map could be kind of difficult. And I could see that in a sense where if you were trying to take on all the reinforcements, uh, depending on your team structure as well, it might be more difficult. But honestly, the main takeaway from what I did is that so long as you can block the forts coming from the boss's position, the map really isn't that bad. Going down the right-hand side is ultimately the better strategy just due to the fact that you don't have to get uh, sandwiched between two groups of enemies, right? You're not dealing with horsemen coming from the boss as well as the four reinforcements spawning from the upper left. So just by going the right hand side you save yourself a lot of trevor. I definitely think it's worth a rescue staff on the higher difficulties as well. I was looking at the footage when I was editing the last video as well and I think that it might be possible to rescue Cheese Marth across the river. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't tried it yet. But it looks like it should in theory be possible if you stacked up enough units. I'm not entirely sure how the rescue mechanics work, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. Also, I wanted to thank you guys for not revealing who the traitor that I was referring to is. <laughs> uh, sorry to that guy who was very curious about that, but it's a spoiler best left unsaid, I feel. Nobody knows this, <laughs> like nobody knows who I'm talking about, really, unless you watched all my crap. Uh, and if you're willing to put up with some of the older quality videos of mine, you might come across who I'm talking about yourself. But I think we can leave it at that, eh? We're barreling on ahead to chapter 16 today, and this one's gonna be a lot harder. Thank God I don't record these well in advance, you know what I mean? Like, I record these a day before they go up. So with the schedule I have right now, I basically get two days to think about this crap before having to actually play it out, which is just great, because this next one is gonna be a mess, most likely. Now then. <laughs> it was a fierce battle like no other. However, Altia had been liberated. Yes, our homeland has been liberated. Only the castle remains. If we regain Altia Castle where I was born and raised. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for believing in me. Tears shimmered down Marth's face. And the girl who gently wiped away his tears couldn't stop her own. Aw, oh, Sheeta. Jeez Louise. Alright. <clears throat> Deltre, we've returned at long last. We're, we're back where it all began. Yeah. It's a curious feeling. It feels like yesterday that I first stepped foot in here and yet it seems so far away. Yes, I remember. When you first arrived here for training, you had no experience of battle. And now, look at you. <laughs> Literally level 17 promoted. And now, you've grown into one of the continent's finest young soldiers. Deltre, with you here, I have no doubt that we can reclaim our homeland. We're all counting on you. I don't know, man. Katri has been putting in some work lately. She's been putting in a lot of work lately. I don't know who the best is. Oh, here we go. You mean it. One of the most relevant units at my disposal. Speed and defense. Oh, Katri, here we go. And Alexa, hey, I... Pretty sure that's literally an elixir. It just restores your health back to full. A quick axe, which is good. Uh, to an extent. Oh, cool. Warren. We definitely were going to use him. We definitely were, so that's a very useful stat boost. Now, we're going to get a little bit NSFW in here, if you know what I'm saying. Because we're going to be talking about perhaps the most erotic thing of all. Map design. Oh. Don't let your girlfriend catch you watching this video, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So over here, we have the only change that Lunatic Mode makes to this map that I am aware of. Uh, perhaps there's some other crap inside this room, and of course, by this point, it's not even really worth saying, but weapons are, of course, upgraded as they have been since Chapter 1. <laughs> but the only real change is that this thief right here is moved two spaces to the left. Ordinarily, on lower difficulties, he would start right here. Additionally, this thief has been added right here, so you have to deal with him as well as this guy. If you're trying to kill this guy who has the Geosphere, you need to get this in order to complete the game to its true ending. Does that make sense? So if you want to be able to get the complete ending of the game, you must kill this guy. You cannot let him escape. If he does, you have immediately failed and have to start over. <laughs> Basically. If you want the true ending, at any rate. But that's not all there is to talk about. 
map design. We have Astrum here, five chapters after he would have even hoped to be relevant. I don't know, if he would have joined on... Uh, what was that? The Sanctuary of Sorcery. If you would have been able to be recruited on that map, you could make a case that Astrum is actually really good. <laughs> here, though, oh my god. Every single one of his subordinates can one-round him. Can we just put that into perspective? I'm pretty sure they could have done that since we first saw him way back in Chapter 8. So it was like, this guy needs to lift more. 14 strength. 16 speed. His defense is actually pretty moderate at 15 points, but it doesn't matter when he's being doubled by everything. And there was also a comment suggesting generals and the like, but that's this right there is sort of my number one issue with them. They only have a speed cap of 21. These guys on this map have already got a speed cap, excuse me, they have a speed stat of 24. Meaning that unless you have maximum speed as a general, you're getting doubled by everything on this map. Now, Astro's positioning is very interesting because it allows him to easily be baited away from the rest of this group. You can see there if I can put a unit here, he will come up to this direction and attack them, whereas every other hero can easily be distracted by units down here in the south. I definitely need to do that because trying to uh, trying to kill all of these heroes while also keeping Astrum out of the danger zone could be pretty annoying, I believe. And also, uh, if I have a unit up here to the north, it sort of incentivizes these guys to spread out a little bit more. The last thing we need to do is get choked down here in the corridor when we have things to do. Now, there's a bunch of chests on this map as well, and thieves will be grabbing them as soon as possible. Uh, I believe they end up grabbing the Bullion, a Speedwing, uh, Master Seal, which is essentially money at this point, and an Elysian Whip. Now, there's one other treasure, which I believe is right here, the Rescue Staff. So we definitely want to bust out the Thief Staff for that bad boy. The other two treasures are a Shaver and a Goddess Icon in these two chests. I'm not sure which one is which. But honestly, at this point in the game, they're both totally irrelevant to anything that I could possibly do. So I'll be skipping over both of them. Really, the Goddess Icon could be sold for money, and that is about it. Speaking of gameplay crap, since I've seen a lot of comments like saying that watching this video can help them understand their own mentalities and how to approach maps and whatnot, I'm just going to throw this out there as a little uh, project for you guys at home. Today's magic number is 28. Can you determine why? <laughs> Have you figured it out yet? Uh, and this is the kind of thing that I always have in the back of my mind when I'm actually planning out these kind of maps, just for the record. I'm not going to say why 28 is the magic number, but I think you guys know why 28 is the magic number. I have faith in my viewers, goddammit. <laughs> okay, since I think I'm going to need to bust out the Nosferatu for this one, honestly, uh, for one small thing later on in the map, I'm going to buy this final robe. I'm going to slap that boy on Linda. She has something resembling an HP stat after that. Yeah, because right now she has what? She has what? She has 31. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's garbage. That's definitely garbage, but if I give her this, there is a chance that she maybe takes a hit. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Mara speed. I'm begging you, girl. Uh, skill speed res. Okay, well, hmm. <laughs> That'll have to do. That will have to do. Astrum, tell me about yourself. Ah, uh, Deltray, it seems that Astrum is waiting among the enemies inside the castle. Are you familiar with Sir Astrum, Sir George? Yes, I've known him for a long time. He's not a bad fellow, but it seems blood rushed into his head when he heard that Altia had betrayed Arcania. Charged with pursuing us, he has pursued us relentlessly until now. Yeah, seriously, Astrum might be one of the most persistent characters in all of Fire Emblem. Honestly, how many maps did this boy show up on? Like three at least. There was no way he'd listen to us then. However, now that he's charged with castle defense duty, he might listen. I'll try and persuade him. However, wouldn't that be dangerous? We haven't used you a single time, George, I know. But I've known him for a long time, so I know his personality well. Leave this to me. Alright, man, if you say so. So yeah, I have to bring George on this map. I don't believe that anybody else can recruit Astrum. It is unfortunate, but we have to. We have to if we're doing full recruitment. And since when have I ever not done full recruitment? Jeez. Altia is under our control once more, but a lot of things have happened between then and now. We swore to take back our homeland from Arcania, but couldn't return right away. Without a way to defeat Emperor Hardin, we had no choice but to flee to Kadain. Seeking the Light Sphere, we traveled through Henri's way to obtain it from Lord Gato in the Ice Dragon Shrine. And then finally we returned to Altia. The time to fulfill our oath draws near. All that's left is to recapture Altia Castle. You said it, Jacob. Always filling us in, man. Fluttery! What? So, how was it? Did you like my dance? Yes, I'm brimming with energy. Are you happy that I'm here? Yes, I am. When you're here, my training is far more productive. You're just saying that. It's really because I'm pretty, right? You're always saying it's for your training, but truthfully, you just enjoy spending time with me, right? What? No way. 
You're like 14. Wait, okay, perhaps. Uh-oh. Huh. <laughs> eh? At first, I thought you were annoying. But after seeing you dance more and more, your dancing had... No, you had charmed me. So you mean... I decided not to confess my feelings. After all, you would have laughed at me, but I... Oh. Uh, well, that's... <laughs> I hate this! Oh, but, but it's still my first time doing this, so... But if you really want me to, Deltre, then I... Oh, Vita. Oh, Deltre. Gotcha. Oh! <laughs> you know what? I take it all back. This scene is amazing. <laughs> oh, got her! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Oh, I'm sorry I doubted you, game. Okay, I've recovered, I think. What? You asked me to tease you back, didn't you? So I did. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you goddamn serious? I won't forgive you for this. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That was worth it. Now it's all worth it. Etzel, talk to me, man. I know nothing about Etzel. Sir Etzel, it's time for the meeting. Oh, got it. Sorry, I'll get going right away. That ring, is it dear to you? Yeah, can you tell? Uh-huh, you seem to stare at it every now and then. Was it a gift from somebody close to you? Kind of. This is a memento of my late wife. Oh, that's depressing. I see, I'm sorry. No, it's alright. My wife dreamed of a peaceful world, and I'm fighting to make her dream a reality. But I suppose I think of her too much. Well, don't just stop me there! <laughs> I gotta find a way to feel that some more. <laughs> That's the speed. And now, jump. Got it. Stop moving the moment you fall. Uh, how am I supposed to... Thud. <laughs> uh, did you fall again? Yes, as you can plainly see, Maris, you have eyes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That was probably insensitive. <laughs> you aside, Miss Maris, I'd say it's almost impossible for anyone to pull that stunt. Well, I'd be in a lot of trouble if people could mimic me that easily. But you seem different from the usual buff guys. You were close enough. Is that so? It's all thanks to my grandfather. Oh, yes, one more thing. Huh? Stop talking about your grandfather, please. It's literally all you mentioned. And also, I appreciate the fact that you didn't ask me why I chose the way of the sword, despite being a woman. Yeah, for a knight, there's no difference between man and woman, after all. Oh? But, well, when you're quiet, you do look rather elegant. What? <laughs> when I'm quiet, I what? <laughs> she... Ooh. <laughs> Must be a hot button issue. Do you want to die? N no, I'd prefer not to, thanks. It's quite literally a game over, so... Uh, but more importantly, I wonder if... Could you lower this dangerous knife that's lodged rather close to my neck? <laughs> huh. I'll think about it. Next time, I'll be twice as deadly as this. But... But weren't you the one who started the subject this time, Miss Maris? God damn it! I think that's where that one ends. I know that some supports only go up to two levels, so. Huh. Athena and Delta. I know I'm not using Athena, but god damn it, I like Athena. And so, reconnaissance is checking on the enemy's conditions before the battle begins. I suppose that's about it. Did you understand, Miss Athena? Yes, we were indebted to you. We learned a lot. It's all thanks to you, Deltre. No, I'm happy to be of service to you, Miss Athena. But not just the birds. This country's customs, they vape people in. They are very complicated. It's, so, it's so hard for me to do this. I'm not a master of accents. They are very complicated. We are often very surprised. Is life in your country that different from ours, Miss Athena? Yes, completely different. But if we came to this country, as so a sign of the respect, we must get used to the way of life of this country. I see. I think that's admirable. Yeah, um, yeah. In our country, we have a saying. If you enter the snow country, it becomes snow country. Is that saying really like that? We don't know. <laughs> we tried our best to translate it to this country's language. I see. Yeah, that's always one of those weird things about language barriers and crap. Even if two people speak the same language, it's always going to be like idioms and certain phrases that people from other countries might not understand fully. <laughs> it's, it's just one of the cool things about different cultures, really. Uh, no, no, damn it. Zane and Deltre, there we go. Sir Zane! Sir Zane! <laughs> oh, come on. The War Council's about to start. Just where's Sir Zane gone? Oh, come on. The War Council's just about to start. Just where's Sir Zane gone? Screw you, man! Huh? You're... 
You too? I'm Del Dre. I am Del Dre. It can't be. <laughs> well, the real Del Dre, please stand up. Damn, then this must be an illusion created by the Dark Pot effects. I won't lose to an illusion. Prepare yourself. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Hey, <laughs> don't kill me. Don't hurt me. It's me. It's me. Couldn't you tell it was just a joke? S Sir Zane. Hey, you and Princey take everything far too seriously. So I thought I'd try lightening the mood. But it looks like my joke backfired. <laughs> kind of like my devil axe. I thought you were going to kill me. Exactly like my devil axe. Shut up, Zane. Forgive me. But Sir Zane, you should cut the bad jokes. Well, I didn't mean any harm, you know. I just wanted to put my special ability to good use. Check me out. I look exactly like you, don't I? Well, you might be right, but... Huh? Aw, oh, shucks. I thought I looked the same, but I guess I was a little off. Huh? Where? Well, I look a bit more manly. <laughs> the real thing looks a little lame compared to me. I'm the shit. Just go away, man. <laughs> I've had about enough. Sheeta and Militia. Is this where she finds out that she's never going to marry Marth? Oh, I can't wait for that. Militia. Oh, good day, Princess Sheeta. Yes, good day, and all that. I'd like to have a good long chat with you today. Oh, is that so? Actually, I'd like to ask your opinion about something, Princess. My opinion? About what? To tell the truth, another prince has appeared before me. And even though I already have Prince Marth, my heart is confused. I don't know what I should do. Oh, my wavering virgin heart. <sighs> well, you really are in a pickle. Oh, what should I do? What would you do, Princess Sheeta? Me? Oh, right. I've never gone through this, so I'm at a loss. I see. Well, then I'll just have to do my best to find a way to make everybody happy. Now, if you'll excuse me. I couldn't tell her yet again. But it'll be fine if I just leave her be, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I'd be I'd be really concerned. I feel like Malicia is the type of girl who would do some crazy shit. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Okay, so I think with all of that out of the way, we're ready to fail, most likely. Most likely. Okay, yo, I thought I had it. I thought I had it, and at the last second I realized something that would be way smarter to do. It's just one of those things, you always have to be thinking about all the individual mechanics of each game. And I realized that with the way this game works, I could probably do some cheeky crap here. Uh, I'll explain my setups and crap as we go, but we have story. How disgraceful. They let thieves inside the castle. What if they've stolen the Geosphere? Sorry, we spotted a suspicious looking thief making his way north. We should capture him before it's too late. Sorry, if necessary, I shall recover it. Your orders, my lord. Oh, hell no, you will not, Deltry. You're a zerker. You gotta bug it. Oh, I forgot about Abel again. <laughs> Yo. Okay, one second. Prince Moth, please hold on. McKellen, did you come here with Dolph? Correct. Dolph and I are going to be your reinforcements. Oh, good. Now we're saved. <laughs> McKellen might actually be even worse, which is crazy, but hey. Arcadia has nothing left for me. For the justice that I believe in, allow me to fight by your side again, Prince Moth. At least he looks like a badass. And then this guy's about to reveal their plots. Which is good, otherwise this would be <laughs> kind of difficult. Oh well, permission to open the door and attack. Wait, don't be so hasty. Inform me as soon as any of the chests in the treasury are opened. We will sorte the moment that happens. Both the thieves and the Altians will want their greasy hands on the loot. While they're busy trying to unload the chests, we will take that chance to attack. <laughs> this is a battle of intellect, not brawn. Don't forget, attack when the chests are sprung. Did you catch that, Deltre? I say again, attack when the chests are sprung. Thank you, thank you, Willem. And as you might imagine, <laughs> that's exactly what's going to happen. I forgot about Abel, but we can talk about Magellan worse. So he is yet another free silver. He does have very good uh, weapon ranks. He does have very good weapon ranks, unlike Dolph. Uh, sporting a B in bows right off the bat. Now, I mistakenly earlier had said that Beck could use the Parthia at base and bring Glass into a sniper. That's not true, but McKellen actually can. Uh, my mistake was that I assumed that Horsemen have E in bows by default, when in reality they have D in bows by default. So the weapon experience was a little bit off on that one. Generals, however, do have E by default, so McKellen can immediately use the Parthia. However, that is about where the good news stops. I mean, let's be honest, just look at these bases. You thought Astrum was in a bad position? Well, look no further than this guy who is hopelessly destroyed by every single enemy on this map. Now, uh, this is McKellen. <laughs> now, Dolph, on the other hand, actually had the capability to survive one round of combat if he was facing a sword user. McKellen, on the other hand, does not have such a luxury. 
His growth rates are as follows. He has 100% HP, 75 strength, 0 magic, 50 skill, 40 speed, 50 luck, 70 defense, and 5 resistance. So, on the whole, his growth rates are far superior to that of Dolph's. However, it is just not worth it at this point in the game. It's truly not. He's a level 1 general. He's already promoted. His base stats are very, very poor all around. Only 15 defense. Only 15 defense. That is so pathetic for this point in the game. I think Est is like... Yeah, Est has 13 defense, just to put that into perspective. And comparable HP. Now, granted, I, of course, roped her. But other than that, she... She! Est, of all people, is just strictly better. <laughs> And that's like, that's that's just a death sentence, that, in my opinion. There's really nothing that this guy could do that somebody else could not. Now to splice in Abel as well, real quickly. Right, man oh man, why do I keep forgetting to talk about this guy? Now Abel, unlike McKellen, unlike Dolphin, the original game is actually quite the beast of a unit. I'm, I'm actually not sure if Dolphin McKellen make an appearance in book two in the original game. Uh, somebody, I'm sure somebody out there knows, no doubt. Abel is perhaps salvageable if you are very very invested in using this character for whatever reason you know maybe you just like his design that's cool that's cool but on lunatic mode i just do not see where this is in any way shape or form worth the trouble that you would need to go through to bring this guy up to speed i do believe he has one rank of sword over any other paladin so ordinarily they start in e this guy actually comes with d uh, he has B and Lances, which is fairly good. He can use Silvers right off the bat and whatnot, but that's about where the good news stops. Of course, you could reclass him into options like Draco Knight uh, to take advantage of his decent Lance rank. But other than that, there's really not too much at this point. Just look at his base stats. That really says it all. 15 speed is being doubled by everything territory. Even generals at this point are rocking max or near max speed, from what I remember. Or from what I know of Lunatic. So... He's being doubled even by the slowest enemies, as we've seen on the previous map. Uh, not very survivable, not particularly strong, nor fast. On lower difficulties, though, I'm sure he could sub in just fine. Now, his growth rates are as follows. 100% HP, 60 strength, 0 magic, 60 skill, 60 speed, 40 luck, 40 defense, and 5 res. A trend you may have noticed with the pre-promotes of this game is that they actually tend to have exceptionally good growth rates across the board. Uh, not so much that they completely outshine their non-promoted counterparts. However, this may be one of their best showings in terms of long-term potential. The problem is that for pre-promotes to truly shine is that they need some kind of short-term potential as well. And unfortunately, Abel falls into the group. Uh, he falls into the group of characters that really has no niche to fill at this point in the game. On lower difficulties, again, he's perfectly viable as a substitute. If you've lost Luke, if you've lost Rhodey, if you've lost Cecil... If you've lost, if you've lost Layden, if you've lost Belf, if you've lost oh, God knows how many other Cavaliers as well, if you've lost Frey, if you've lost Kane, <laughs> you can see what I'm saying. I feel like most of the problems with this game, or at least in terms of the pre-promotes of this game, could have easily been fixed if they would have only included some kind of hard mode bonuses similar to what they did with Fire Emblem 6 and Fire Emblem 7. Abel would have been pretty decent, I should imagine, if he was getting buffed up to account for the fact that he's now being played on lunatic difficulty instead of just being played on normal difficulty. Uh, I would say that on normal, you could definitely use this guy, but on lunatic, there needed to be some kind of balancing mechanism for a lot of these late joiners, I really feel, and it is a little bit disappointing that nothing like that was implemented. Uh, but alas, it is what it is. If you save all your stat boosters for him, he could be good. If not, I would just bench him. All right, so here we go. We got George here. He's got to be here, unfortunately. Now we're going to try and drag Astrum's butt over to George as soon as possible. Uh, he's got to be in a few places at once, which is why he's a horseman, so that he can easily, easily traverse this map. I actually may as well just have Estes the beer water right now. I think that should still cover her for when her time is going to come here in a little bit. Now, my boy, Deltre, the man. I have the hammer, so we're good, we're good. I'm gonna need the hammer eventually, I think, but maybe not, maybe not. We're gonna just go ahead and just turn on these ranges real quick, just to give myself a better idea. Pella has to book it, basically, because she's gonna be useful for uh, one or two things here. Catcher is actually strong enough to one round each and every one of these heroes as they come, thanks to the star or boost. McKillen's got another job to do up here. He comes with the Silver Lance and Silver Bow, so that's really nice of him to bring me some money like that. I'm definitely gonna need it. <laughs> Without a doubt, I'm gonna need it. Uh, Maris. I have her with the elixir that we found. Pretty lucky find, pretty lucky find. 
Oh, but she's gonna distract the sniper who can actually attack that area down here. So if we can pull this guy away from the rest of the group, that would be great. So that's why somebody with lower defenses is actually in the back here. Uh, they're gonna pass up Deltria, they're gonna pass up Gadria, and come for Maris instead, which is what we want to have happen here. Marth may be able to get himself a kill, it really just depends. Uh, George slowly making his way up to Astro. Not too much we can do with him as of right now. And I may as well just grab this rescue staff right now. It was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. Oh, oh right, 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 right. That's not what we wanted to do. That's why we don't do the <laughs> that's why we don't do the thief staff turn one, of course. I'm so bad he just said that. No! Alright, so now that we've gone and proved what not to do on the first turn, I think we're ready to try this one for real. <laughs> oh man, that was bad. Hey, I wonder if Katria still gets the support from Marth. In the original game, she gets a 10% support from Marth just for being nearby. So I wonder if that's still true or not. Hmm. Interesting to think about. Well, I'm sure there's some kind of way, by the way, to like trigger the reinforcements on the first turn. I definitely don't feel like I'm personally prepared to do something like that. I'm sure there's some badass tactician out there who's worked out a way, but my group just doesn't feel solid enough to do that. Not yet, anyways. Not yet, anyways. If only S came sooner. <laughs> Could you imagine a game where S came in chapter one? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, I love this map theme so much, too. Okay, so let's see if our plan's gonna pay off here. This guy does come from Maris, as expected. She's gonna dodge because she's a badass. She actually is pretty good here, in her defense. I mean, really, anybody with 28 speed or greater <laughs> could have done the exact same thing. If this is kind of unfortunate for a unit like Sirius, I would definitely be using him, if not for Maris. I'll take that Silver Sword, thank you. That's money in the bank. So two of these guys are gonna end up killing themselves on Deltry, and a third should kill himself on Pella. Which is what we're looking for here. Goodbye. Not exactly sure why they're going for the Avatar over going for Katria, though. Did I say Pella? I meant Katria. They're gonna kill themselves on Katria. I'm not sure why they're going for the Avatar over her, though. It is a defense tie, so maybe there's some kind of weird AI crap going on. I don't know, but it definitely works out for me. <laughs> Without any doubt. Without any doubt. What a good level up as well. What a good level up as well! That's a perfect level up. She already has speed cap, so like, dude, we gotta get to that save point ASAP. ASAP Rocky, baby. Alright, so now they're gonna come for Est. I think I accidentally left her on the Silverlands. The Javelin would have actually been much better here because I would have more health on Astrum, basically. I don't think that it really matters, though. Not really, not in any way that I can see. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take S, put her right in the face of this thief. Since we just saw the way that the heroes move, we know that S is totally safe if I do that, which is pretty funny. George, go! Get over here, man, what are you doing? Why couldn't you join me forever ago? Astro. Well, if it isn't the turncoat, George, what form of death would you prefer? I'll hold your sword, Astro. Even if you fight here, you've no chance of winning. You would have me surrender. Never. Though I may be the last man standing, I shall fight on. I'm a soldier of Arcania. Why do you fight? For whom? Emperor Hardin? I think not. Not for him. For Princess Nina. For Arcania. Then tell me, was it Princess Nina who ordered you to arms? Do you honestly believe that Princess Nina would wish for a war like this? She! I have not seen the princess in some time. She has all been ill of late. She has been ill of late. Arden is the rule of Arcania and my liege. I have no choice but to obey. If I do not, then I betray Arcania. And I betray Princess Nina. Astro, Princess Nina entrusted Marth with the Fire Emblem. Do you understand what that entails? C come again? What are you trying to tell me, George? Are you suggesting that Princess Nina ask Prince Marth for his help? Is there any other reason? Okay, so hold up. Hold up. If this is Astrum's only reason for joining us, couldn't he have joined back in Chapter 8? Because we definitely had the Fire Emblem this whole time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I distinctly remember getting that crap from Linda forever ago. You mean to tell me that the only reason that Astrum isn't on our side from Chapter 8 onwards is because Marth never thought to tell the guy that Nina had already asked for his help? Word? <laughs> you deadass game? Alright, man. <laughs> Come with us, Astro. See the truth with your own eyes. If you die here, how would Midia feel? Live, Astro, for her. Live and... Skip the text, apparently. Live and face the truth of what has come to pass. Hmm, I suppose it is unavoidable. But George, 
Should I learn that this war is a product of Mars' ambition as Emperor Hardin claims? Heads will roll. Am I clear? Yeah, you always say that, man. Shut up, George. All right, so Astrum, you can kind of tell my feelings about this guy already. I really wish he would have joined at an earlier point in the game. And after that recruitment conversation, now I can't actually think of any reason that he wouldn't. But all right, all right. Let's say it makes sense that he joins here. If you didn't want to use him, here were his growth rates. He has 100% HP, 60 strength, 0 magic, 50 skill, 40 speed, 60 luck, 25 defense, and no chance of res. He does have an automatic A in swords, which can be nice, and I believe that his axe rank is elevated one stage up to D rank, but that is about where the good news stops. I suppose that, unlike some other characters, his stats are in the position to possibly be patched up by stat boosters. Uh, you could reclass him to Swordmaster with a few speed wings, and he might be able to get stuff done off the bat. I don't know how whole, I don't know how true that would hold on lunatic mode. From what we're seeing, certainly not very well. Oh, excuse me. Certainly not very well, though. Uh, there's not really too much else to add about him. Unfortunately, the late game preview modes in this game are just not that amazing. They're not very impressive, all things considered. I think the Astra may have some use on this map just to help me clear out some of the thieves and whatnot, but other than that, he's not looking so hot. He's really not. Now, Maris! Uh, with the Rainbow Potion, she's actually capable of doubling these guys, which is what we want to do. Of course, I could have tried to feed her this kill via the Master Sword, but we don't want to do that so that I can actually just give it to Marth. <laughs> he needs it so much worse, man. We're going to be getting a Bullion on this map, but I feel like I'm going to have to spend most of that just to get Marth to where he needs to be. Like, <laughs> without any doubts. But that's okay. It is what it is. With an 11 Sword, we can just blow him away. Not an issue. I'm... <laughs> Am I about... Yeah, let's get cheeky here a little bit. I think we can pull something pretty funny off here. So I'm going <laughs> to... We're going to move Katria here. And we need to move Pallet her maximum distance if we want to move here so as to block one of the heroes. Now only one of them can reach Maris with the way they were positioned. And it also has a side effect of something really funny. Now, I don't actually need the Avatar up there anymore. So, what we can do, we can heal him back a little bit. I want to move Linda over to the right-hand side, exactly where I'm not entirely sure just yet. I'm really not, but I do know that I want her on the right-hand side. And I also want the Avatar somewhere nearby exactly where I'm not entirely sure this is a save point so <laughs> you might be seeing that eventually but I feel as though we could probably just afford to leave this guy alive for the time being so I'm going to nobody else really needs healing like doesn't require it 100% as to use the vulnerary so she can take a hit if need be for something hilarious uh, Linda can fry this guy and I actually would prefer to give this to Malicia if possible no crit so we will I think if I actually just let this guy go for the treasure, he probably would. Yeah, I think I could have, so maybe that was the smarter thing to do, but he's not going to grab anything truly important for me. Not really. Nope, that's not what we want. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I was thinking about something else. Oh, that's exactly what we want, though. Right, originally I had Malicia have a weapon. <sighs> I don't think it matters. I'm pretty sure this guy's gonna go for the treasure. We can find that out right now. Do not thief staff. Who needs healing if anybody? I'll actually heal up Arth so that he can get himself a kill on this thief. He doesn't need to be anywhere particularly fast. Oh, look at where he moved. <laughs> Amazing. Now this other guy's gonna go for Maris. Yeah, definitely. And she has a chance to gimp him. If she doesn't, it's whatever really. She does it, but she can actually finish him off herself, I do believe. And that should be okay. That should be just fine. Yeah, we can definitely do something about that right here. So Maris can murder this guy. No issue. No issue whatsoever. So get out of here. And now we just gotta watch that sniper in the bottom left. Hey, there's A-Rank Sword. She actually got pretty strong from that. Oh, I don't really like where this guy moved. Actually, this is no issue. Okay, so I just moved dice there. I just moved dice there. He's going to take a hit, but it's fine. He doesn't need the help particularly badly. And wouldn't you know it? He moved into the worst possible position for himself. <laughs> ah, destroyed. <laughs> Est is coming through. I'm sorry. I thought the triangle attack was unviable. <laughs> hey, just for, just for the record, all of them can do this. Est, you can't be missing stats. That's like so unacceptable. You literally cannot afford to miss speed. What is your speed growth? 
80% est. Come on. Get with it. Get with the program, girl. Uh, I can maybe even afford to not kill this guy. Actually, I can just use Magellan. Not the best thing in the world, but I really... I need to get the Star Sphere over to Linda. Like, I absolutely have to. And it would be better for Marth to do it because he has less important things to do. So, unfortunately, I need... Yeah, I need McKellen to kill this guy. Well, there you go. He did something. I don't want him to suddenly become aggressive because I blocked off his uh, treasure. You know what I mean? With George, we can just send his butt back here, which is exactly what we're going to do. Because he needs to be in position on the next turn. Now, once the thieves start grabbing the treasure chest, the door will open on the following turn. It's not going to open this turn, even though thieves are going to start looting the place. So we do have a little bit more time than you might think at first. Now, we can take the Star Sphere. It doesn't really matter what I trade away, honestly. Marth can give that to Linda from somewhere safe. Belle is going to head up here with the pure water. Pop that boy right now. She needs it because this thief coming around the corner has a Levin Sword after all. And Astrum, I can just hit the save point with him. I kind of would like to wait for next turn, but nah. We'll just save up now because I, I got to get this positioning with Linda just right. And I'm not sure where this, like, the spot is. You know what I mean? I'm not sure where the correct spot really is. Uh, mm, we also need to barrier the avatar at some point. But for this turn, well, I forgot to use the pure water on S. So now I have to double healer. I have to. I can't think of another way out of this situation. Magic speed, luck, res. Pretty good. Pretty gosh darn great there. And I, I think, I think Linda wants to be right here. It's really hard to tell. <laughs> it, it honestly is. But if she's there, she can go one, two, three, four, five, six. The avatar wants to be here. Yeah, he wants to be here. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, we're going to see. We're going to see. So there goes the Master Seal. Not an issue. No issue whatsoever. Fortunately, Dice does not get critical hit. So that means we should be basically fine. Now, what does suck is that I absolutely need to heal. Uh, I need to heal for... Pella now. Yeah, and that's what I was supposed to be doing last turn. I can't believe I ever got to use the damn pure water. Like, that sucks so much. That really does, because that ruins the whole strategy. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, I have to heal for her. Well, we can take this guy out of here. No real issue. Let's go. Oh, yeah, there's also a flash of light whenever you use one of the holy weapons. It's pretty cool. Doesn't really do any more damage or anything that way, but it's a nice touch. And I think I would prefer to use the Killing Edge. Yeah, there we go. We got him out of there. If I didn't, I was planning on using a Fortify this round anyways, so it's not really the end of the world. Now I need to give Linde a Star Sphere. She definitely needs it, without a doubt. Yeah, she definitely does. And I want her, like, here. Yeah, I want her here with the Nosferatu. The Avatar can be right here. Yeah, the Avatar can definitely be right there, but I have screwed up, huh? Maybe not. So I can use the barrier here, and I'm not sure if this positioning is 100% correct. I think I have an idea, but we're going to find out really quickly if this is going to work out. So if I move George right here, that should be where I want him. And now I can dance for Malicia, or I can, yeah, I can dance for Malicia. Move her back a little bit. And I would actually rather take a Physic rather than use the Fortify. She's a little bit close to danger here. I, I played a dangerous game with her. But I think that this positioning should be okay. We want to hit Pella. I don't want to use the Fortify just yet, and I'm not going to need... I'm probably not going to need Linda to front the offense on the next turn, so that should be okay. Now, we can use Pella. Now we can use Pella just fine. Please don't crit. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we can take this guy out of here right before he's able to make his escape, which I wasn't too worried about him. He can only escape from the upper left. And would you look at that? Would you look at that? Goodbye. Wow, she's just so easy to use. I just don't see the problem. I'm sorry. Maybe it's me. Strength, skill, oh, that was super bad. 
That was super bad. Now I hope I get blown away. <laughs> no lie, I actually hope I lose. I genuinely do. <laughs> Should have healed with Maris. What am I doing? She had the elixir for a reason, and I forgot to use it. What's that? The chests have been sprung. Now, open the door. <laughs> Their panic faces will be glorious. Oh, is that so? Not if I have anything to say about that. Now they're going to start stealing all the good crap. This guy... Oh, I put him direct... <laughs> that was the wrong spot. That was the wrong spot. He should have been one south. He's in range of the boss. So that's going to be a dead McKellen. I still want to see if the rest of this works out, though. Uh, something interesting about siege weapons is that they cannot double under any circumstances. Why Catria? So I was in range of the boss, but not in range of that guy. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do that on the fly. It really is. We put George in a good spot, so we know this will work. We know that this part will work for sure. I didn't want Catria down here either. They, they're only attacking her because she could die. McKellen was supposed to distract one of the swarm guys, but I guess I accidentally put him out of range. But now, with the Nosferatu, we can take out these guys easily as they come. Now, the reason that the Avatar is actually in position next to Linda is so that he will draw some of the mages specifically because I don't have enough of the Nosferatu to actually just throw Linda out there. If I did have like a full use Nosferatu or something like that, she could literally sit in front of the door, I'm pretty sure, and she would be fine. She would be totally fine, but I don't have that option, sadly. I may not even have this option. Hold up. Hold up. Can that other guy... Oh, yes, he definitely can. So I need to rethink that. I wasn't un like I wasn't entirely sure how the positionings would work out. I had a general idea what was in the room there, but alas, this map's gonna be a bastard, huh? Y'all call it a failure? I call that crap scouting, man. <laughs> so after everything we've seen, I think that I have a strategy that should work 100% of the time, and this isn't just crazy. This is absolutely nuts, but it's gonna work out. You might have noticed that this time we brought along your boy Julian. I I realized that the way that I had done things in order to actually get the Elysian Whip, I would need to break out the Thief Staff two times. I'm not willing to do that because there's at least one more thing that I can think to do with the, uh, that I can think to do with the Thief Staff. So we're going to do this in a very specific way. A very specific way, which is exactly why I love this game as much as I do. You would never see something like this in, in uh, in other games. There's just something so weird about the simplicity to this one. There's only so much you can even do on any given move, right? You can attack, you can move, <laughs> you can use an item, you can wait. If you have some kind of special ability like stabs or transform or whatever, you can do that. And other than that, uh, it's pretty uh, It's pretty much the most basic game you can think of, really. But the way that they actually integrate that into the gameplay, into the strategy and all that good stuff, it's actually just amazing. <laughs> it's It's... It's fantastic. Honestly, this is my favorite Fire Emblem game in terms of gameplay. I have to say, especially after sitting through this lunatic hell mode, it's been an absolute trip. It's been an absolute trip. Actually, let's turn the animations off until we get back to where we were. I think that would be a little bit easier. <laughs> a little bit less time consuming, if anything. There we go. So we have ourselves set up to do this within six turns. Julian takes six turns to read the chest. Yeah, Julian takes six turns to reach the chest. So that's our time limit, basically. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a time limit necessarily. I, of course, could stay out and grind on the reinforcement. It's definitely a possibility. Which is something else I like about this game. It's very flexible in how you approach it. I'm more of the person who likes to uh, complete whatever the objective is as fast as possible while getting good stuff along the way. By the way, I did attack that thief for a reason. Not just because I'm going to be getting uh, a level up on Catria for that. But there's an actual reason that's going to matter like three, four turns from now. <laughs> Trust me, you want to do that. You want to injure at least one enemy. Now, what I was starting to say was I, I really like how flexible this game is and how you actually complete the objectives and whatnot. Uh, other games are a little bit... Other objective types, right, are a little bit more rigid in how you can actually go about completing them. Let's do the Silver Sword, try to get Martha Kill if we can. Hey, Maris, that's how we do it. That is how we do it. So we can take the Levin Sword now. I know, I, I know I'm all over the place, but I want to explain this while also finishing this thought. But Seize is... Oh, Marth! Marth! <laughs> oh, hey, Catcher didn't kill that guy this time. Fortunately, we still have the Master Sword, which is like... One crit over two attacks is like... It's, it's incredibly likely. 
It's very favorable for myself. Let's put it that way. So we don't miss a 96 this time. I'm pretty sure the head Marth missed a 90 something. 96, I think. Oh, Catcher actually dodged. I'm still gonna use the vulnerary because I took the time to figure it out. I took the time to plan around it. God damn it. All right, so I think the point that I was trying to make was that Seize maps are, in my opinion, the most flexible map type because you can complete them in basically any way that you want, right? I'm sure there are people who never thought to do the maps the way that I do them. I'm sure that there are ways that people are completing these maps that I never thought of myself. And that's just the beauty of it. You can just rush the throne, as I often do, <laughs> to varying degrees of success, or you can stay the course, you can try to route the enemy, you can do basically whatever. And that's something that you can't really say about other objective types, because they're a little bit more rigid, I feel. Whereas, C's maps are very flexible, you can tackle them in just about any order, any way that you so choose. And despite this game being incredibly simple in terms of, like, raw options, what you can actually do with those options is perhaps some of the most deep and engaging crap that you can ever see in any Fire Emblem game. I know, now we're talking about gameplay design. Ooh! <laughs> I can hear you already. Not so soon after that map design crap, Deltre. I can only take so much. I'm sorry, we're getting a little bit steamy in here again. <laughs> but I hope you can see my point. Get destroyed, by the way. I hope you can see my point. There's just so many different options and ways that you can approach the situations. Uh, she didn't get speed, but everything else was so good that I don't really care. <laughs> and there's just something oddly charming about this game for its simplicity, I guess. Now we can proceed mostly the same with these uh, first moves, except this is obviously much cleaner because now I can give Linda the Star Sphere right now. She needs it in order to do what I need her to do. Uh, no matter what, we still have to double heal S tier because she's really good. She's really, really good. Insanely good. <laughs> Insanely good, you might say. Uh, George can head on back down here. All right, so good. We want to be able to, let's see, George will be here. Yeah, George will be there, so we can we can physic back you, basically. I, the, the, the counting on these tiles is pretty specific, but I've realized that George does actually have enough time to do what he needs to do immediately. Uh, same with the avatar, but he needs to be right here. And because I brought the recover step on Malicia, we're totally good. We don't have to risk anything. Now we know that McKellen should be there. <laughs> That's just one of those things. There's really no way to, in advance, know where the moths can move, but now that we do, it's not an issue. Uh, Dice not being here is going to make those thieves a little bit trickier, but I think that Astrum should be able to help out. Astrum should be able to make up for any lost offense, I do believe. Now, I could barrier Fina right now. Is that smart? Is that oh. I don't know, man. We'll, we'll, we'll not do it. <laughs> Who needs healing? I can deal Pala or... Oh, Pala's literally the only person who's injured. <laughs> so no, we'll hold off. We'll hold off. But I have a pretty good idea of what's going to go down here. Now, in a perfect world, <laughs> in a perfect world, Maris is going to destroy this guy so that I can save with Astro. Come on. Yes, it's a perfect world after all. So cool. So now we can save. Take advantage of that safe slot there. No strength, not needed. She at least got, oh, she got A rank as swords. And she got speed, which is also very, very mandatory at this point in the game. The sooner she can cap her speed, the better, honestly. Now, with Est and Pala, we can take out this guy, get another level up for Est. She would really like to get speed this time, though, I'll tell you that. Without any doubt. Oh, she didn't level up? She must have missed Astrum. She did miss Astrum, no wonder. I don't think that's going to make a big difference. She's still going to be getting two more kills, which should be two more levels in theory. Yeah, she missed Astrum, so that's why. Okay. Julian can just head on in. These guys won't attack, and he's not in range to be in... Uh, he, he's not in the danger zone of getting this guy, basically. Now, I think that they will attack you if you're blocking their path, but technically, uh, we're not blocking his path just yet because he can't actually make it out of here no matter what. So he's totally safe. Pala. Katria, even. <laughs> my B, my B. We want her right here, though. Linda. She's already been buried. We're going to throw her right here with the Nosferatu. Right there should be perfect. George, you're going to move all the way in now. We can dance with Fina. We don't want to barrier George because if he does, it's going to screw up the targeting. And we can throw George right there. The avatar is all good to go. We're going to pure water up because we still want to get the attention of those mages. Marth. Keep on keeping on, man. <laughs> I think right here is fine. It doesn't really make too much of a difference at all. Uh, because I did learn something pretty interesting about the boss in my little scouting session there after that first failure. He will... 
totally ignore all protocol and just go after Marth. I don't know why he does that, but if Marth is in his range, he will just attack Marth. Which basically means that Marth will die to the next attack, meaning that the enemy will just smite him. Which is the last thing that we want. So let's see if this pays off. What's that? The chest has been sprung. Now open the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already know, man. Still gonna take the Bouillon, the speed wing. Yes, this swarm guy goes for you. The other one goes for George. That's perfect. This guy is now gonna waste his time healing that thief, which is why we attacked him in the first place. Linda's gonna cream each and every one of these guys. There's really just no way. There's absolutely no way. And also another annoying thing that I was able to learn after the failed attempt there is that those warriors have killer weapons. Uh, so that's the reason that they don't kill themselves on Linda. If they didn't have killer weapons, they would all die to Linda due to the fact that she takes the most damage by far. But Linda has a lot more luck than Catria, so they in fact go for Catria instead. Or at least that guy will. Why did... Huh? Alright, I... What happened? I have no idea. <laughs> I guess I was too busy talking to see what went wrong. I guess I probably crit or something. Yeah, I, okay, I crit the first guy. That's what happened, isn't it? So that was not supposed to happen, obviously, because that opens up another avenue for uh, Katria to be attacked. So this is what we actually wanted. This is what we wanted. I, how did I miss that? Yeah, I must have crit that guy, right? I must have. Now, this guy's actually a little bit too beefy here. Uh, that's not really an issue, though. No, that's no issue. It's a slight issue. <laughs> Wait. But only a slight one. So what we can actually do then... Oh no, it's no issue at all. Yeah, because he didn't switch to his bow. So I did account for this, in some sense. What I should have done right there was take the Geosphere out with Marth. I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I, I did send it intentionally because I'm going to need one crit over the next two turns. I either need to crit with uh, Linda on this guy up here, which is why we have the Thoron on her. Not this guy specifically, but the sniper that's going to come after. So we crit that guy, which is great. Uh, but we need to crit that guy as he comes with Linda or crit him with Arth. And if I end up having to use Arth, I can use the Geosphere to good effect by giving it to Linda, which will then boost Marth's crit rate. The Geosphere, by the way, <laughs> increases uh, critical hit of all adjacent, not adjacent, but uh, all allies within three tiles by 10%. So pretty good item uh, in hindsight. What we're actually going to do here is kill this guy first. Now, Maris is actually in a little bit of danger here for the time being, but of course, we're just going to heal her back, so it's not really an issue. And now, something weird about the AI is that they're only going to go for Maris because she's the only thing in their way. <laughs> like, Julian's not in the way, so he's totally safe here. I don't know if that's true for the Thief AI on other maps, but I do know for a fact that it's true on this one because I specifically remember doing something similar to this in a previous playthrough of this game. And it caught me off guard there, but it's it's true, it's weird, and we're gonna take it. We're 100% taking advantage of that, make no mistake. Good one, Est. Good one, Est. And she should even be able to get one more on the way out. Yeah, we definitely can. We definitely can. So her strength is looking good. She missed speed only one time here. Uh, I can now move the avatar here. I don't want to do that first, though. What I'm actually gonna do is use the fortify, so that way I know if I need to... That way, basically, I know if I need to use the Immortal Axe or if I can just use a Vulnerary. It looks like a Vulnerary should be fine. So now we want to move the Avatar here specifically and no other tile <laughs> because that's going to get the attention of the boss who could otherwise probably be able to kill somebody like Linda. Uh, Kachiru would be in a little bit of danger herself, but basically, they'd be able to kill somebody in combination with the Swarm guys unless I do that. And of course, Fina is still more than capable. I can even get the Thief Staff out here right now. Now, of course, if I didn't have uh, enough magic, or if I, for some reason, didn't have the capability to heal the Avatar back, I would be doing that on this turn. But because we're totally fine, we can grab the Rescue Staff right now, which we definitely want to do. We 100% want to get that. Now, these guys are all perfectly healthy. They can take hits as needed. Maris is going to kill this guy as he comes. They're going to ignore Julian for reasons unknown. Now the only thing that could go wrong here is that Marth is in range of this killer bow guy, but we're still in a good position to seize on the next turn, as I'm sure you guys have noticed. Now we can turn the animations back on, because hey. And these guys keep coming for a while. <laughs> now this is the kind of thing that I just love about this game so much. Have we seen this? I don't know. I'll we'll read it just for old time's sake, huh? <laughs> Perhaps it is time you realize the terror of my magic! Perhaps it is time you realize the terror that is Deltre! Are we gonna get hit? No, not even! <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought your magic was scary. Didn't seem too scary to me. Alright, so now all we need to do is avoid two critical hits. And 
preferably get one, but even if I don't get a critical hit, it's not gonna matter because George is in range to use the other save point at this stage. And I'm not above doing that. <laughs> Over two turns, this should work out in my favor, basically. We don't get the first one, but that's fine. Of course, they are gonna be breaking out some heals at this stage. But I do need to take this guy out in a single go because, uh, because essentially, I want that fortify that the other guy drops. So, we didn't get the crit there, but it's okay. It's totally fine. Really kick-ass level up, Marth. Yeah, he gets healed. They're not even gonna bother to use the, uh... They're not gonna bother to use the thing. <laughs> what, what's it called? The physic, because he's already so close to full. Weird thing about the AI, they don't generally like to heal unless the enemy is under half HP. And that's true for basically every game. Now, the rest of these guys cannot catch me. Marth should do enough damage once I give him the Star Shard. He does enough damage right now, so what we're gonna do... <laughs> I do not care. You gotta figure this is fairly reliable over the course of two turns again, so keep that in mind. It's not just one crit, I'm rolling for two, and I can even make it easier on myself right here. I'll take the Killing Edge out of the inventory. I will take the Geosphere out of the inventory. We can give that to Linda. She can hold on to that boy. We're gonna trade spheres here. So now Mars getting a really nice critical boost. Look at that, 43%. In combination with the other one? Oh, that's really unlucky. That's insanely unlucky. Yeah, damn. Not really a whole lot I can do about that, just unlucky. Again, we're rolling a 27 at 100% hit rate, and then we're also rolling a 43 at 100% hit rate. So it's very, very likely that over two turns this goes my way. Unfortunately, it didn't. There it is. Now, to be perfectly honest, this wouldn't be an issue at all if I didn't have to use S. <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't have to use S, but you know what I mean. If I would have been able to bring, like, Sirius here, Pala can just do everything that S was doing this entire map. And, uh, Sirius would be able to contribute some chip on this guy such that it wouldn't make any difference that I, if I got a critical hit or not. But that's not as funny as using S. <laughs> now, Linda. We'll just use the Thoron, honestly. Blow this kid back. And she can do this. We can grab the Fortify Stab. And honestly, this is... Oh, I love this map a lot. This is actually a really, really cool map to try and do quickly. Honestly, because there's just a lot of stuff that goes into it. And again, it's one of those things where if you're just watching it, maybe you can't tell. Maybe you can. I, I, I have faith in you guys that are watching this that you can understand that uh, just because something completed looks pretty simple does not mean that the process to get there was at all easy. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with this. Six turns, we're going to have everything that we needed to get. And honestly, the more and more I'm playing this, the more confidence that I can say the following thing. Don't talk to me about no conquest. Don't talk to me about no Shadow Dragon R5. I don't want to hear any of that. This is the hardest Fire Emblem game by so much. By so much, y'all. I don't know. If you've not played this, you probably don't understand necessarily firsthand. And I would definitely recommend playing this game. Maybe not on Lunatic if that's not your cup of tea. But this is one of the most legitimately challenging Fire Emblem games I have ever experienced. Easily the hardest. Easily the hardest. Don't crit him, please. I would really like to give this to S. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we can get a level up for Pala. We can get a level up for Est as well. Really good on Pala. More strength is always appreciated. And with that said, put this guy down. It's definitely worth just using the Silver Lance here. I'll I'll trade that for 100% accuracy for show. Sure. Oh, baby! We made it out like a bandit here. Get speed, get speed. Yes! Oh, she's so good! <laughs> so there's money. And I think that is everything that needs to be done. I do believe so. We got the we got the treasure. The, the throne is clear. Your boy Marth is right here. Yeah, your boy Marth is right here, about to come through. There's nothing else I could do. I mean, I could heal, but it's not really needed. So I say we're done here. Now this map, again, it's it's really crazy. These swarm mages and the boss himself, right? They make this whole process a lot more difficult. And I feel like newer players won't necessarily put together the pieces, at least not until you understand how the AI works. That is such a huge thing with this game. Just simply understanding how the game and its mechanics work will make all the difference in the world. It'll make all the difference in your world. The difference between somebody who understands this and does not understand this is going to be down to that of playstyle. Now, their playstyles are going to be entirely different. I can, I can guarantee you this. I can guarantee you this. Because once you understand that you can distract these guys and make it genuinely pretty safe to assail the throne room with many, many different characters here, uh, provided that you give adequate distractions for the Siege Dome users, 
The difference in understanding that and not understanding that is going to be night and day on a map like this. Because you can see these reinforcements. You can see these reinforcements, and uh, I, I wouldn't normally do this. But I want to show you the point that these guys come for one more turn on Lunatic Mode. Yeah, on, on Maniac and below, it's two rounds. On Lunatic and above, it's three rounds. I just thought I would show that. And the reason you don't really want to take these guys on Lunatic is because you're going to be pushed back so much. You're going to be pushed back so much. I suppose that an alternate strategy that you could use is have somebody down here as the first wave spawns. And then you could perhaps distract them by dragging one group to the left. But you don't want these guys to consolidate like this. How would you deal with this situation? You know what I mean? How would you deal with this much firepower? Not to mention, <laughs> and I don't think I brought this up a single time, but... Starting on the previous map, mages now have forged magic. Forged magic, may I remind you, in a game where resistance does not exist. My best res tank that is not magically based is Katria with a whopping 11 resistance, which still leaves her solidly to it KO'd by these guys, might I add. My next best would be like a paladin. Where are you, paladin? Yeah, paladin pala has six resistance, and that is my second highest non-magic user. Uh, in terms of res. So yeah, Forged Magic in a game where res does not exist. Forged Magic in a game where res does not exist. That is some scary crap, man. And the Killer Bows as well are really bastardous. Um, I actually kind of like how they're used on this map because it changes the targeting priority away from somebody like Linda or even Malicia, really, for that matter, if you were using her as a Nosferatu tank because it's very likely that they would have higher luck than anybody else in the area which would bait the warriors into attacking somebody else. Unless of course Linda or your no spot tank of choice was the only one in rage but then you suffer the issue that these guys are going to trap you and prevent you from getting into the throne room with enough characters so you have to find a way to balance that out. While trying to move Marth sorry behind up here while trying to get Julian over here to get the Elysian whip if you're using S which you should be while also killing all the thieves, while getting the Geosphere, <laughs> you, you can see the thing, you can see the problem, right? You can see why this map is ridiculous, right? Because there's so many different aspects that you have to juggle. While also being able to provide adequate bait for these guys if you're trying to play quickly. Because if you are trying to play this quickly, you have a very, very tight window in which this works. I don't think you can play this much differently than I did and end up with a similar result of not having to face these reinforcements. And that's going to be my main strategy going forward, I think. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about how ridiculous the reinforcements are in this game, and they, they indeed are. They're definitely gratuitous from what I can remember of my Maniac Mode playthrough forever ago. <laughs> I have played this game a fair bit of times, as you may have suspected uh, by watching this playthrough. But I think my main strategy going forward is going to be trying to avoid the reinforcements as much as possible. If I can beat the reinforcements, if I can complete the map before they become an issue, then I don't have to worry about these guys, right? I don't have to expend my resources and tax myself to try and take these guys out when I can just end the map before they become an issue. Now, of course, I will be passing up on things like experience. I could have gotten a hammer off this guy uh, and some other crap as well. But I definitely feel like there's a certain flow to it uh, when you're trying to play quickly. I feel like the game accommodates you well enough that it's not an issue. You don't have to slow down to grind. You can use almost anybody that you want. And in that sense, uh, this is easily growing to be one of my favorite games. I, I, I sat here and just gushed about this map for like five minutes, but it's really, really good. It's a very well-designed map. I had a lot of fun with that. Seize. Oh, uh, that is chapter 16 cleared in six turns. <laughs> Sorry, we have routed the enemy. At last, our tears are ours once more. Yes, it's a wondrous feeling, but is there news of Elise? Oh, it's Gato again. Ha, ah, Prince Moth, can you hear me? I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but it would seem that Princess Elise has been kidnapped by Garnef. Lord Gatto, do you speak truly? I have found that Garnef commanded his priests to search for the clerics of noble birth. It is most likely that I and your sister were spirited away by Garnef. It can't be. What does he intend to do with them? That I do not know, but something foul is on the cards. There can be no doubt of Garnet's involvement in this series of unfortunate events. Really? <laughs> All right, man. Lord Gatto, where is Garnet now? Oh, yes, the series of unfortunate <laughs> events. My favorite book series. I believe that Princess Nina is his next target. He probably... He's probably at Arcania's palace. I understand. Then I shall, too, go to Arcania. 
I still have to free Harden from the Dark Sphere's influence. I will defeat the Dark Pontifex Garnet and restore my sister. No, I'll save all of them. And with that, Marth gets some new resolve. Oh, really? Right now? <laughs> We're doing a side quest again? Why does this always happen? <laughs> oh, hello, Deltre. It's been too long since we last spoke casually in Altea Castle. This place holds a lot of memories for you, doesn't it? Your long days of training. Not to mention you met Katarina here. Yes, Marth, I remember who Katarina is. Gosh. I'm sorry, I was in a hurry and... Excuse me, did you come here to become an Altean knight as well? Yes, I did. <laughs> ah, sir, please be careful. Deltre, I sense the same enemy presence at that time. They may already be close. Sir, we're under attack. It's the assassins. Begin preparations for a counterattack on the double. And with that, we unlock chapter 60 next, which can be done upon fulfilling the following conditions. Beat the, ch uh, beat the chapter within 32 turns. For Lunatic Reverse, the other conditions will be on the screen for the uh, appropriate difficulty level as of right now. The other alternate condition that you can use to unlock this map is to have the Avatar promoted and above or at level 5. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, feel free to leave a like and write a comment. I always appreciate those guys. Read every comment, all that good stuff. And until then, I'll catch you on the next one. See you then. Peace.